Hello gamers, scriptable objects are awesome. If you use them extensively, it is likely that you felt at some point the need to build your own tools around it. See, scriptable objects have their advantages, but also some drawbacks. For those familiar with my event system video, you know some of the drawbacks. Where are the events referenced? How to raise test events? Are my events even used at all? And so on. And there are assets that focus on scriptable objects and eliminate some of those drawbacks. And those assets can make you really productive as a developer. And the asset we are going to check out today is called SOAP, Scriptable Object Architecture Pattern. Made by Obvious Game, which is a sponsor of this video, SOAP is a Unity plugin that can make your life with scriptable objects much, much easier and faster. So today we go through the asset, I'll explain how it works, and how it can improve the team's productivity, how it can work faster, and uh, we'll just develop faster, okay? It's going to be great, okay? I would say many positive things about it, not just because it is a sponsored video, but uh, because I really mean it. Once installed, you get this SOAP window. Let's go over it, it's going to be fun. Let's start with the core, scriptable variables. It's one variable, float, int, vector tree, game object, wrapped in a scriptable object. Let me show you how it works. When I click damage, the value of the scriptable float called example float player health changes. The health bar updates, the health text updates, all are referencing the same scriptable object. Those buttons modify the value. Those components are listening to changes using the own value changed action. You only trigger logic when something changes. No need to do anything in the update loop. This is pretty handy. Usually, the player owns its health data and other scripts need to get the player one way or another and you need to get a reference. Here, the health data moves to another place and everyone who needs the player health just gets a reference to the player health. If it is the first time you hear this, it might sound overkill, but if you understand the value of it, and when you should use it, and you will enjoy using it for prototypes especially, but it's a production ready asset and you can build without any issue really big games with this. This architecture can help you reduce spaghetti code. And the first thing it does is it reduces the code needed to get references when building systems or subsystems. Think of a player root component who has armor points on boots, chest, helmet, along with a UI showing those areas and so on. An armor piece might be more complex than a simple float value. So I subclass scriptable object to create my own type or use a SOAP type creator to generate it along with other classes that SOAP offers. Just thinking about building this system in a traditional way gives me already a headache. With the SOAP approach, I could prototype it really fast. I'll come back to this example later on. Now, when I mention spaghetti code, I know that some people roll their eyes and the biggest drawback with scriptable objects is knowing where you referenced something specifically and where you use it. Well, SOAP comes with a wizard that gives you a good overview of all objects in your project and where they are used in the scene. Not only that, during playtime, clicking or opening a scriptable variable shows you who is currently listening to changes. This is pretty cool. I had no difficulty going through the example because it just shows me where things are used and this kind of self-documentation of your game architecture. Next, we have bindings, which you saw in action when the health changed. We saw that we can register to own value changed of a scriptable variable and get notified when it changes. Now, SOAP comes with a few ready-to-use bindings, like bind slider, add the component, link the scriptable variable, and done. The slider's graphic will both update the value and also react to updates. It can do both ways. Now, who exactly will react? Well, let's find out. Here you go, all those are reacting. Let's check the game over screen, for example. There's another bind script that takes a value, makes a comparison, and if true, triggers another event. All those bindings are basically help us to get you move quickly. And the code is easy to understand if you want to build your own small components. 
it just subscribes to own value change and then does something when the value changes. It's just that. Next up, we have scriptable lists. If you understood the usage of scriptable variables, well, here's the same, just as a list. And it gives you a few other events like on item added, on item removed. Often in games, you need a singleton manager that knows all the enemies on the map, so new enemies must join the manager and also leave when destroyed. Singletons are a bit annoying to test because they must exist, especially when you just test a small sub-scene or an isolated playground. So a scriptable list saves you again a ton of time and once you create a custom class, for example, you can also add methods to it, which is very handy. Your list can take over a lot of the work that was before in a singleton class. So it, it makes things um, not necessarily simpler, it's just a different way to, to organize your code. All right, scriptable events. All right, we know all what is this about. This scene has two enemies. One has a reference to the health and modifies it directly. The other has a reference to the scriptable event and raises an event with a given integer value. I see that only the player is listening for it. And yes, there is an event listener. He is a bit more fleshed out than the basic system that I have showed you in the other video. The concept is the same. Raise an event on one side, react on the other side. Here you win a few things. So the wizard shows you where events are referenced and used. This is a big win. You get a raise button to easily test your events, also a win. And you can use debug values to test even more. So here, for example, when the health changes, the value is used by the particle system to emit a certain number of particles. And you can test that here. And if you love the ultimate event system, this is basically the next evolution because of all the tools that are around it and enable you to work much more efficiently with scriptable objects. All right, next up, we have saving. So if you paid attention, you saw that there is a save checkbox and if you check it, the value is saved. It is saved in the player prefs, so it's not ideal for complex data or saving your full game, but let's say for prototyping, this is perfect. You can really, with no much code, have your game state saved and test very quickly. So when you stop the game and restart it, those scriptable variables that are marked as safe will just reload and, uh, and be persistent. Perfect for prototyping. All right, next we have scriptable enums. Basically, this is your standard scriptable object that stores data that is meant to not change. Think enemy type, car type, weapon stats, skill stats, and so on, this kind of stuff. Biggest advantage is again the wizard giving you all the references where that object is used. This is really non negligible Then, this folder might get crowdy really quickly. You can work with folders, of course, but SOAP also supports tags as filters. But there is an also another way that SOAP offers, which is called SUP assets. Just create a standard scriptable object and you can use the SUP asset attribute on scriptable variables in the project view. Once you create a new asset, it will look like that. This is pretty neat and just another way to keep your things organized if you like that. And last but not least, we have runtime variables. It's exactly what you might imagine. You can create scriptable variables at runtime because there might be moments where you don't know exactly what you need or how many of something you need. Like you have X enemies with X health bars and you want to use soap to link the enemies with the health bars, but you don't know how many enemies you have. So you don't want to pre-prepare tens of scriptable variables or hundreds of scriptable variables. That would be pretty silly and uh, limiting as well. So you can create those variables at runtime. That's why it's called runtime variables, all right? And remember the armor plate example. So you can imagine using this here, each armor piece creates the variable for its own data and links it to its own UI element. For a small number of objects, this is a good solution. For a large number of objects, you probably need another design pattern. And that's all for this asset. I hope you enjoyed this video, as I say, if you like the ultimate event system, you will love this as well. The link of the asset is in the description. The speed at which you can make objects communicate with each other and the fact that you can easily track where those references are being used makes this a great asset. You can just develop so much faster with this. And one thing that is important to mention is that this asset is production ready. 
It is optimized and outperforms other assets and techniques, so you can ship games with that. So maybe you just use events, maybe you just use lists, or maybe you use everything that SOAP has to offer. It's a solid asset and you should consider keeping this in your toolbox. I think this is one of the greatest assets on, on the asset store. All right, thank you very much for watching and I got your feedbacks. I'm working on it. Those are coming as next videos, so stay tuned. More videos are coming. Now go work on your game and I'll see you later.